see. I, uh, I'm breathing out strongly because I wanted to, first of all, <laughs> just to say, I've got quite a strong cold. <laughs> so my uh, voice is a bit uh, lower than usual. Or usual. And uh, and and I may very well be blowing my my nose uh, regularly. I've uh, been sitting for quite some time. I was going to uh, not record this now because because I've been sitting for some time, but I decided that actually when a topic is 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 hot that's that that's the time to speak about it not wait till the indefinite future that's that's what the mind does right um so i notice i may be uh moving around a little bit i'm I'll I'll tr try to abstain from that. Uh, I will abstain from that temptation to move about. Uh, speaking about difficult topics is emotive, and the tendency can be to um, feel like you're in the hot seat because because you are. I am when I speak personally personally, impersonally about challenging topics. So what is the challenging topic to to move on to it and not dawdle so long and in the introduction? The hot topic is, <laughs> as often, is uh, forgiveness and non-forgiveness, hatred, anger, resentment, feeling hated and feeling hateful so it's perhaps easier for the mind to notice not perhaps it can be easier for the mind to notice when other people are doing things to seem to be doing things to you ah uh, they are doing this and that and that and that. And if they would just stop this, then everything would be perfect. But that's they and them. And uh, really, they and them are always going to be doing what they and them do, which can, if 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 I've got a um. If I've got a fire in myself which is is out of control, then of course everybody else's paperwork is going to give give um, more fuel for that fire. But if my fire is under control, can be nice and warm. Uh, we all have all the elements inside ourselves, a different expression to how they are outside in the physical world. And there's something in that as well, that um, how things look on the outside, how earth exhibits on the outside, water, fire, air, and ether, how that exhibits on the outside is not then how we transmute it and transform it within us. So most of most of us, unless of course there's something like a, a spontaneous combustion where there's a unknown sudden fire uh, and somebody just physically combust most of us don't have physical flames within us but we have other expressions of fire and so that fire 
when when it is out of balance it becomes super judgmental hateful resentful um the victim and i'm i'm not talking about being a victim of a crime or a victim of abuse that i would say is a different use of the word when some some physical thing happens uh that yes it did happen i'm talking about um if you could say like a, a value neutral term of of something something has happened but then i'm talking about like a karmic version of something has something has happened but then how am a hankar how is my ego mind attaching stories to it and making it bigger than something it is not to say that i would not want that situation to ever happen but then from my past i'm pulling out experiences and saying that happened and this happened and this happened and this happened and therefore something into the future is going to happen it can leave me and i'm just going to speak in the first person as an example and give you an, an invitation to speak in the first person for yourself because as i say often i highly recommend calling up your own number so you can speak these things through for yourself not everybody has time to sit down and value neutral just work things out sequentially until to exhaustion do a kriya with something so that you really work things through to a point where where sorry i have a sudden need to slightly adjust the camera angle that feels better so i can really speak to you which is also and automatically speaking to myself um using this opportunity this whole opportunity to really breathe in breathe out so we're moving through the sequence in a way that is is not just listening to some woman speaking on youtube but is actually a a kriya a yoga kriya that can transform you it changes something for you as as you're listening because you're digesting it and the way you digest it is you engage your nabi breathe in breathing out your nabi your navel point and breathe in breathing out and keep your hands on your heart all the way through this pressing the hands into the heart or left hand on the heart right hand on the belly if you're quite new to breath work and you just want to check expanding into belly contracting nabi up and in as you breathe out that the external can feel especially in these times more and more intensely it can be terrifying whichever way that you look there there isn't any there can be times where you feel there's no positive affirmation of you just you in you and you know what honey that gives you an opportunity as impossible as it can feel 
to positively affirm you for you, even if it feels insane to do so because you feel like maybe you've done something or done many things that are not forgivable and your life maybe feels like a mess. I don't know what to do and I don't feel redeemable and relationships are excruciating they they're there's social media land and there's <laughs> texting land where everything is broken down into a cartoon heart and that's supposed to show love real love in relationship and actually a real relationship is dynamic and changing and uh, it goes through the stages of taking time to communicate with each other otherwise sadly there is no relationship we can aspire to a relationship but it is burnt to cinders uh, and, and what really is burnt to cinders is the illusion, our illusion of what that relationship was. It doesn't actually exist. And each one of us has an idea of a fantasy of what the other is to us. And these stories meet and they're like, um, you know, if you look into a mirror, when there's a mirror behind and the, the images can bounce off each other endlessly. I, I sometimes think of uh, the Bruce Lee movie, Fists of Fury, and I think it was that one where in the last scene he's fighting um he's fighting some scary dude with a has a steel claw for a um hat that he's attached to his hand um and they're in this hall of mirrors and wherever he looks he thinks he sees that horrendous monster but then the mirror moves and actually it's not there, it's not there. Uh, where is the real monster? And relationships with ourselves and with others can, can get like that, and it, uh, which is living in, in, in hell, in, in what I would understand as a definition of hell, where things are just endlessly mirrored mirrored back at you and and they're the worst aspects of ahankar of of ego self and they can feel very inflamed you know when uh, there's an abscess which has a whole load of gunky poopy pussy stuff underneath um that is hot and goes very deep and it just uh, expands to the point of bursting that's the same with these sorts of situations and for those of you that are following along um, in terms of numerology we're in the land of the three and seven of fire three one four two seven nine six eight that um starting starting off in the land uh, I, i'm w not going to go into more detail about that aspect of it but um move, staying there in this the state the hot seat 
um, which can feel like a space of real internal torture. And really, if you're then jumping into the one and nine, it can be so all-consuming um, that no jokes, it can take you to full-blown insanity because um, because those mirages of where the where the scary monster is coming at you and what re rejection of self will come next um, can be too too much and then and then what to do if the if the soul self if uh, consciousness conscious stopping is not part of the practice and realigning and saying actually wow for me in myself not not about anybody else but actually what are our tools if you have a seriously distressing experience with another and another and another it's a sign to really hold on a minute i need to come back to my alignment and this is humbling maybe it was feeling really humiliating i'm bringing out the worst expression of myself what does a uh, awful turning something and and the term itself awful has been has been turned around something that has awe that is awe inspiring has become something awful which is exactly the opposite of the meaning something something's truly gone amiss something is amiss and that thing that is amiss is myself that I've, I've moved too far away from myself I need to come back to my breath what I hold most precious and, and what uh, my intention is in the world not to doubt that but then to move on out extend into relationship with others from that place and never doubt it commit to my self my intention and my highest self so when things are getting spooky alarmingly scary with others or with yourself and it is feeling hateful that it feels like um actually i don't know what other way to put it but that evil is rising and you don't know what to do the first thing that you can do is actually acknowledge acknowledge even before you acknowledge that you're frightened acknowledge that you don't know what to do but just acknowledge that you need to draw in back to you even if you feel wow he he said that and she said that and they did this and that can feel so upsetting i can't what are you telling me to forgive that I can't forgive that. Even before that, just first acknowledging, yes, I see the situation. I see and 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 I've extended, I've expanded myself out of myself. So then coming, I don't know about you, but I find that that acknowledgement that 
wow, I'm feeling so out of my depth and I don't know what to do here. I don't feel like I have the skills. I don't feel that I have forgiveness in me. Ouch. Ouch. And even that, then the judgments can come up. See, you're not even being forgiving. And then the non-forgiveness on top of the non-forgiveness. Yeah. And the hateful self, the self-animosity can go deeper and deeper. And the pressure builds until it explodes. It can explode like a abscess or a pimple infected. And so instead I'm going to be what can I do now okay I can be forgiving of my non-forgiveness that I can do today I can acknowledge myself that I'm in a in a fix in English we say feel like I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place and maybe then your response is to just feel quite rigid and go into quite negative karmic patterns that are deep set into the limbic part of the brain in the unconscious, subconscious, and you're just then a um, on your way to... Um, digging yourself further into into the darkest place possible for anybody and rock bottom always has a rocker bottom it can go uh, endlessly down into a black hole so stopping you're acknowledging that there's something that you feel overwhelmed by, that you don't have the skills in handling, that you feel unforgiving, maybe there's even hate, maybe you just feel, I, I, it's beyond me. So, There's a saying that by which you fall is that by which you rise and equally that by which you rise is that by which you fall. So because one and nine axis is in constant communication. So in, in the issues that starts mapping the path of if you're falling and, and this is so to know that one and nine is always in relationship up and down the spine so rising and falling is always going to happen at first it happens so i never want to ah oh, what a hateful horrible crappy person i am well one thing i can gift you again and again is Walking the path maps the path. And one of the things I know is, um, I know with a capital K, is, um, is if you've been through something, it can be an opportunity to share and put it at service. Put it at your altar. Put everything you have the good, the bad, and the ugly, put it at service, see, okay, if somebody like me, like me that has fallen 60 trillion times, and then still fallen again, and done the craziest stuff, the stuff that I would never ever want to do again, it's just like, how was I that unconscious that I did that? 
can you then put it at the altar and say that that gives me the opportunity to find a path that I can then share with others if they're going through a similar situation. So, so I was at that stage in our chat, and I know I sometimes go off a little bit to pull it, pull it back because some of this is relevant. So, but to pull the strands back, we were at the one and nine uh, spine and alignment and integrity. is what, as you fall in the things that you feel that you can't do, that guides you as to when there's strong emotion, it's like pressing on an acupressure point or that shows you your the path where you can walk along the meridians. There's something needs unplocking something that's stuck something that's hurting there not to ram into it but to walk down it between the bones gently gently with the flat of the fingers into something like hegu this point between the thumb and the which these thumb an index finger pressing in very lightly and noting, ah, is that sore there? Same with, same with our life, slowly easing out the pain, experimenting with pressing like this from both sides, lightly, lightly, not ramming in suddenly, forcibly, just getting a sense of what, what's, what's going on there. This is a point, by the way, that for all manner and levels of pain when you're in pain, you can come back to that point and just ease it out. So the things that you feel you can't, I can't, 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 I can't forgive. It's too much hate, there's too much resentment. I can't, I can't, I can't. That maps the path of, okay, such strong emotion I can use that energy to say, but but I want to. Even if it feels impossible, I really, I want to. I want to be able to do this. And then that's the, the I coming in, the one and nine, the want. So, so then... What is possible now? That's the next question. In the four and six, staying with the breath. In and out breath, because this is intense stuff, the most intense stuff. What is possible now for me without, without forcing it? Um, breathing in, breathing out. Actually, something is shifting for me even through doing this because I can feel, I can feel, <laughs> I can feel it's real. There's no doubt in that. My shoulders are coming down, so something is changing. Do you feel it in yourself? It's great to, um, do you feel it in yourself? Then, I can sense something is changing in my relationship to myself. I'm going to just take a moment more. See, things are unblocking, <laughs> moving the water elements, the two and eight. And I do actually, I can't say how at the moment, but I have a sense of compassion for myself and compassion for others. Just just being in 
this space. I feel a real sense of compassion for the human condition rising because actually to navigate through the sequence that we've worked through in this time to really slow things down and start unpicking it and taking the time to risk being re repetitive. So just, ah, just forgive, just forgive. No, what is, what is the situation for you now? So then paradoxically to come into a space where I say, I don't know how to forgive. And this is what I'll end with for today because I feel like it's enough. It's been a, a long career is I've reached the space in this career of 31427968 where I don't know how to forgive or even sometimes what to forgive because the non-forgiveness can feel viral that it's everywhere like this hall of mirrors of and then so much pain and so much sadness come from that okay i don't know how to forgive but what can i do today i can seven what i can say the word five i can say the word forgiveness that is something i want to do and it's possible i can say the word forgiveness can breathe in and out and i can i can choose to be in relationship to the word forgiveness i can feel that as a genuine want in myself i want to be in relationship to the word forgiveness to feel the fire rising, the, the, the anger and frustration because I want to be in a very mature relationship to forgiveness, but I sense this gap of still there's this, these resentment seeds in me that haven't burnt out. There's these hatred and and it's scary, this this monster that um that is as much out there as in here, and that can be terrifying as as we were discussing earlier, as I was sharing earlier. So but I can sense the word forgiveness. I want to forgive. I want to be in relationship to the word forgiveness. I want to just have it as part of my vocabulary, call on the higher virtue of forgiveness and pre-forgiveness. Breathe it in, breathe it out. Under all situations, equally. Like whatever anybody else's story is about whether I should or shouldn't I or this is unforgivable or not, or this, this, but in this situation, this situation is unforgivable. No, under all situations, I want to be in a space where I can ultimately be in constant remembrance of forgiveness to the point that that, that even dissolves, that there's automatically, well, of course, um i have a sense of the human condition and the pain and challenges of being human so why would i not forgive i would always be in that state and then to hold that in as a prayer right now to just breathe that into myself and uh, 
closing our eyes now, let's let's pray together. Let's use this as a embodiment of prayer. Hands on the hearts. Risking taking some time for silence. I'm closing my eyes too. We can connect to a different level. Breathing in, breathing out. Completely out. Any frustrations, any hatred, any non-forgiveness, anything that's got stuck in your space, you can just breathe it out right now. Whatever stage you feel you are with it, you can you can be the best Hollywood actor and just breathe it out, breathe it out, breathe it out. Practice, practice. Breathing in, breathing out, inviting in compassion, compassion. Inviting in peace, but before even peace, inviting in the ability to endure through all the challenges of life. Remembering, reminding yourself that we, we can call on these higher virtues. We don't have to be these higher virtues. Compassion, endure the unendurable. And it takes a lot of pressure off that other people, other humans also, also go through this stuff. It's immensely humbling that, yes, yes, me too, I did that. I did that which feels unforgivable. And I'm going to leave that at my altar. I'm going to hand it back over to God and remember that I too am made in God. And that I too can piece by piece be at peace. I too can call on peace to descend in this breath and forevermore. Satnam. 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 When the way forward may feel completely impossible, I can, we can at least do this. Why Guru Jika Khalsa? Vai Guru Jiki for them. Bless you, bless you, bless you.